which is to encourage young people between the ages of 11 and 14 to actually pick up a book again. Um, we've got four courses now, we've worked with four schools, and uh, we're just about to publish our next anthology. And I'm extremely passionate about working with kids who, for one reason or another, are not reading like they used to when we were young. So we do a lot of work with those. Uh, but I also like to thank Clear as well and the great work that they do at Maggie's. I'm, I'm a big friend of Maggie's and also of Ivory, the last poem that was just read. Can't be here today. We taught him up at uh, Nottingham College. He's absolutely terrific, you're a terrific man. I'm looking forward to seeing him soon. Um, I've written a, a story here about something called a pop up comedy night. Anybody come across that? Where a pub, in a way to, to get drinkers in, um, will have 10 or 11 comedians turn up. Um, the Admiral Rodney in Southwell has one every month. And um, you can uh, put it this way there's a lot more in this audience there is on those pop-up comedy nights, unfortunately. <laughs> so, this is the story. I'll start halfway down the first page. It's ripping tonight, Dave says, pulling onto the A610. Nice place, good crowd, I've got a good feeling about this. I've never been to Ripley, a small town in Derbyshire famous for its brickwork, ancient chapels and competing kebab houses. I've never heard of the pub at the out of the way in. There are six of us. He was expecting eight. Two don't show. Amidst a torrent of wisecracks, he tells us that, that at best, at a gig in Wisbeach, there were 12 comics in the show, lasted three hours. Dave is wearing a gold spangly jacket made mostly of aluminium foil. <laughs> he remains deadpan throughout the journey, the only traveller at peace. The rest of us are in a private anteroom of hell. It's pitch black outside. There's no moon hour, and our only illumination is the evenly spaced amber road lights like giant static wasps. It is cold too, even in the van. That jacket, pure as gold, like the shroud of Croesus. The rush hour is over and the A38 to Ripley is almost empty. Apart from Dave's attention defic deficient hyperactivity, we are silent. Mentally, we rehearse lines, payoffs, deliveries, and impact. Before we know it, we've pulled into the car park and Dave is telling us the scores on the doors. I look at the pub. It's a faceless suburban hole. Stuart Lee had to start somewhere, I think. Dave looks at me. You go last, he says. Top of the bill. Top of the bill. An old boy named Paul who has a priest's collar around his neck is going first. There is a minor kerfuffle as a woman named Petra who looks like a blonde Pamirs argues about her billing going on just before the break. But Dave shrugs his shoulders, says there's nothing it can do. It's in the rooms, he says. <coughs> we get to it. Rather than 5,000 at the Sheffield Arena for McIntyre, there are no more than 20 punters in, scattered around the tables in the lounge. Couples, a gang of young lads from the local sixth form, who Dave latches onto, the anchors. He calls them the Backstreet Boys. A few drinkers around the bar, and six old people who probably remember George Formby and Arthur Askey in their prime, the banjo massive. The landlord hands Dave an envelope, our meagre brawl. I hope more people turn up, but it's a Thursday in November. I get myself a pint, a fifth of my night's wage is gone. They say the top boys can earn 20 grand a night. That's where we all want to be, milking the adoration of our flock at 20 grand a time. Not here, not here in Ripley or a pop-up comedy night. Thank you. <laughs>